Welcome back to Get Down to Business, the show about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. We know that we have the ability to transform ourselves and to persuade and influence others, but it really depends on the subtleties of effective communication. I'm very passionate about that. And um, certainly uh, our mind is constantly altering the information that's that's coming in, going out. But that communication, certainly very, very important. That's why I've got Stephen McGarvey, uh, the author of a fantastic Wall Street Journal, number one bestseller. It's called Ignite a Shift, Engaging Minds, Guiding Emotions, and Driving Behavior. Stephen McGarvey, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Shalom. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. So I always love to get to know the person behind the microphone. Um, you are passionate about key strategies uh, from sex, from successful influencers to motivate people to excel professionally and personally. How did you develop your expertise in this area? I can't imagine it was one day in the shower. <laughs> that's uh, that's a funny comment. I actually failed grade two, Shalom, and they told me I was learning disabled and uh, I had dyslexia. So I, I, at an early in the age, knew that I loved learning. I just hated school in the format that I was being immersed in. And so I just grew a passion at an early age for understanding how people learn and had to develop my own strategies for compensating for uh, so-called weaknesses that didn't fit into the system as it was at the time. <laughs> Fascinating. Interesting. So uh, this book is a really, really interesting read because it's something that uh, entrepreneurs are doing constantly. As you say, igniting a shift, engaging minds, guiding emotions and driving behavior. So uh, let's talk about the premise behind the book. How did you discover this? Well, I, I've had a private practice for, I just retired from that just prior to COVID, but for over 20 years, I had a private coaching practice and got a lot of referrals from psychologists, psychiatrists, pediatricians, alternative healthcare professionals. And I became fascinated with people's lack of understanding of the fact that they can take ownership and accountability for their own states. And so the more I, I started coaching people to realize, hey, you're thinking that whole cognitive process, the stories you tell yourself, your beliefs, your values, impact your emotional state, which drives your behavior. And that's either empowering or disempowering. And I, I think that's really the root of where uh, the, the premise for the book came from, because people would say, you've got to write a book. Where do I get this in a book? And I would say, uh, you know, if, if you see my library, there's hundreds of books. So it, it's really an, an all around passion for learning. Interesting. So you you just said something a moment ago, Stephen, that, that really, really piqued my interest. You talked about storytelling, because I've talked about that quite a bit on Get Down to Business. And now I'm thinking, as you've been telling me your story, you are trying to make me think, feel, and do. Are you trying to manipulate me right now, Stephen? <laughs> what, why, why do you believe that stories can make others you know, think, feel, and do things? I, I think stories have, well, first off, stories are the filters through which we interpret facts. And especially when we work with medical people with market access and, and in the pharmaceutical biotech field, uh, medical uh, specialists, they attempt to convince people logically with facts and with data. And, and what they find is that the data is filtered through the lens of the other person's story. And if their story conflicts with the data, they'll distort the data to fit their story. So it's really fascinating because as we um, associate people into narrative, into storyline, then support that narrative with our data, that's a very different thing than attempting to logically convince people with uh, data itself. Absolutely. I'm chatting with Stephen McGarvey, international speaker, expert on persuasion and influence, and the founder of a, of a boutique consulting firm, Solutions in Mind. He assists corporations and audiences around the world in solving difficult communication problems by guiding them on an emerging, fast-paced, fascinating journey into the unconscious mind. And again, the book, Ignited Shift, Engaging Minds, Guiding Emotions, and Driving Behavior, is on the USA Today and Wall Street Journal's number one bestseller list. And now I understand why. So, Stephen, I know in your book, you talk about the seven building blocks of rapport. We don't want to get too deep in the weeds over here, but what should we know? What should an entrepreneur tuning in to get down to business know about those seven building blocks? I, I think one of the key things is entrepreneurs and salespeople in particular think that the sale is based on relationship. And in the book, we explain that relationship is actually something we treat as an abstract noun that's actually the process of relating. It's how do I relate to the other person how do they relate to me? And if we do that effectively, we conclude that we have a good relationship. And if we do it ineffectively, we conclude we have a poor relationship, a bad relationship. So I think the, the empowering part of understanding rapport and the fact that it can be established and built almost instantly 
and it's elastic. So if I stretch it and break it, I can back up a little bit, reestablish it, and then move forward from there. So I think understanding the difference between those two things empowers us to understand how do we technically, what are the building blocks of rapport and how do we intentionally establish it very, very rapidly for the purposes of doing business? That's, that's great. Um, we're going to have to go to a break in a, in a minute. But before we go, I'm really curious, sometimes in conversations, there's people that seemingly are not communicating. But I know you argue that you're always communicating even when you're saying nothing. Can we just briefly talk about that before we cut the break? Absolutely. I always say you cannot not communicate it or communicate our gestures, our facial expressions, our breathing. All of those things are communicating a, a subtle nod in agreement or disagreement. Um, communicates and sometimes outside of conscious awareness uh, either way we're constantly so being aware of the impact of our communication is one of the primary things that we encourage people to focus on absolutely fantastic fantastic information again i'm chatting with the author of ignite a shift engaging minds guiding emotions and driving behavior we're going to cover it again in just a moment um, but stephen mccarvey how can people pick up a copy of the book and get in touch with you they can get the book anywhere, Barnes & Noble, Chapters, Amazon, anywhere good books are sold. They can get it. It's Ignite a Shift. And they can also get it on our website at solutionsinmind.com. That's solutionsinmind.com. Fantastic. Again, we've got to cut to a very quick break here and get down to business. You can always get on my website, shalomkline.com. That's where you can subscribe, rate, review, and share this podcast. Get a sneak peek of who's going to be on next week on the show, all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. We're going to be continuing our conversation about communicating, about influence, about engaging minds, guiding emotions, and driving behavior. We'll be right back and get down to business. Don't touch that dial. Welcome back to Get Down to Business, the show all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. Continuing my conversation with the author of the USA Today and Wall Street Journal, number one bestseller, Ignite a Shift, Engaging Minds, Guiding Emotions, and Driving Behavior. Uh, you can learn more on his website, solutionsinmind.com. I'm chatting with Stephen McCarvey, and we've been chatting a little bit about how you're always communicating, even when you're saying nothing. We've been chatting about the seven building blocks of rapport, and I have so many more questions, which we won't have time for, but I'm really curious because we are indeed always communicating as you said a moment ago. Um, but I know, Stephen, you argue that it is possible to disagree without being disagreeable. How is that? I've been struggling with that my whole life. <laughs> Shalom, I, I think you would uh, be very good at this. It's using conjunctions rather than the word but. Uh, a lot of people say, I agree with you, but, and then they put their own opinion in. And what it does is it gives that person the experience that their opinion has been disregarded. Whereas if I say that's an interesting perspective and Another way of thinking about this is, or another perspective worth considering is, and there's multiple ways to disagree without being disagreeable and of shaping and forming the conversation in a direction without disparaging the other person or throwing their ideas out the word uh, out of the window. Oh, wow. Fantastic. That's great advice right there. Um, so again, even in this conversation, I'm asking you a lot of questions, um, but I know that you believe that there's a way to use your questions, whether it's in a, well, I always say the informational interview when you're talking to, you know, a potential new client or a new hire or a new boss, uh, potentially, um, that uh, use your questions strategically. Um, let's talk a little bit about that and, and why stating things in the positive makes such a big difference. Perfect. I'll, I'll address the second one first. Stating things in the positive is critical because the brain at an unconscious level fails to process negation. And this is a very common thing out there. If you look on YouTube, you'll find all kinds of things. If somebody says, don't think of the color blue or don't think of an elephant or don't worry, um, we refer to it as a negatively embedded command where I'm actually unconsciously installing the very thing that I want to move you away from. So the key thing there is to state it in the sense of what you do want rather than what you don't want. So when anybody tells me what they don't want, I said, well, if you avoid having that, what do you want in place of it? And really redirecting the brain in the direction of what they do want to keep them focused on that. And that leads us to questions because questions uh, are an incredibly powerful way of engaging and guiding the imagination. 
And so if we think of questioning as sending the person's brain on a quest to search for information, then we can evaluate the question because we can start to consider what quest have I just sent their brain on? So if somebody says, and, and this applies to self as well as to others. So if I said to myself, Shalom, why am I always forgetting? It gets my brain searching for all the reasons why I'm forgetting. Whereas if I ask my brain a different question or myself a different question, what would make it easier for me to remember? Now my brain goes into a state of resourcefulness and helps me put together a strategy for remembering. Wow. Well, uh, we've covered so much and I have so many more questions that I know our listeners do as well. That's why I want to make sure everybody does their homework, which includes buying a copy of the book. So again, Steve McGarvey, can you share the name of the book and how we can get in touch with you one more time? Absolutely. It's called in, uh, Ignite a Shift and the tagline underneath is Engaging Minds, Guiding Emotions and Driving Behavior. And it's available everywhere fine books are sold online and a lot of bookstores as well. And also on our website at solutionsinmind.com. And there's a link there for the book as well. And uh, Sean, I'd really enjoy our conversation. I'm happy to join you again to continue our dialogue anytime. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I encourage all of our listeners to get a copy of the book, which we'll link through our website as well. And Stephen, I definitely look forward to having you back on real soon because uh, these are really uh, key pillars, as you say, building blocks um, for success, whether it's in business, employment, uh, everybody can learn how to better communicate. Well, we certainly covered a lot in today's episode here on Get Down to Business. I encourage all of our listeners to get in touch with me on my website, shalomkline.com. That's where you get a sneak peek of who's going to be on next. Next week on the show, all about small business, jobs, and entrepreneurship. Check out our sponsors, our supporters, um, because each and every week uh, they help to bring all this content, advice, and information to you. That's a wrap. So to success, let's get down to business. We'll talk to you next Sunday at 6 p.m. right here on AM 560, The Answer. Have a great week ahead.